What is up? Thank you for coming to my channel, Prison POV. Hello, this is your Friday video. Don't mind that it's Saturday. Yes, I know my bad. I did not get to a video yesterday, but I basically had to cram five weeks of homework into a weekend. I really lagged in that last bit of schoolwork. I mean, I've been on top of it this whole way through since February, really engaged, really involved. And this last class, for some reason, I don't know. We all have our slumps, don't we? So, it's not that I didn't take it serious. I feel like I really couldn't get into it. So, I put it off. But, hey, when it's time, I no more time could be wasted. Had to get after it. I really kicked that some ass, got in there and got that B. So, I finished it with a B. So, I a new class Monday, and I think it might be the last class. Man, it's going to be awesome. So, be that as it may, here's the third video of the week. It's on Saturday. And here, we're just going to kick it off like this. I thought I had some more introduction-like stuff. But, I'm just going to get right into the video because I can't remember. And for, for some reason, I want to keep on doing that. That's, that's my, my move of the night. Okay. We were at war with the North Daniels and Wasco. The building D3. That's the only building the North Daniels going to. Wasco Reception. Sales D3. You know, there's always a little bit of tension with them. As a matter of fact, in county jail, more often than not, it's just straight out on site. And the Wasco Reception, a lot, of, a lot of times it's on site with them. But, it's even more than just usual having a little fun with the on site. This is something serious because they're just coming off a lockdown because prior to this, six months to be exact, North Enders rushed to white boys and got them pretty good. And they're just coming off of a six-month lockdown because of that incident. And we're all thinking and talking about it and saying, hey, D3, D3 just came off that lockdown from the Northerners rushed to white boys. We need to get some kind of run back. I wonder who's going to go in that building. Whoever goes in there, they, they know what they need to do. They know what time it is. Someone needs to go in there and kick it off. That's kind of the discussion they were talking about in county jail even before we got to Wasco. Then we get to Wasco, I hit DR, I hit D4. I get in there, I'm talking to my cell, we're talking like, yeah, D3 just got off lockdown. We wonder who's in there. I wonder if we should shoot kites. It's kind of hard to get a kite in there. You might get in the raw hands. You want to get into the northerners' hands if people flip over so much. There's not, it's difficult. It could be difficult to get a kite in there. A hot kite like that, that'd be a sensitive. We're wondering, like, what should we do? So next day at yard, we're walking and talking about D3 how they came off a of lockdown. And someone's going to go in there and kick it off. And like, what's it like in there? We figure, hey, if the white boys don't do something, the northerners probably will. Because what they do, they come off a six-month lockdown and everyone starts going to the store. And that, they run a store. Hey, and when they get their sales filled up full store, and they will kick it off again. It's always kicking off in there in D3. We're thinking, so they rushed us last time. We need to get some white boys in there to handle that. As we're walking laps and talking about it, we see a big old solid wood from Bakersfield. A rag. A dude has done a gang of time right there on the patio in front of D3. We all see him pretty much at the same time, like, oh, dude, there's homeboy. We make eye contact with him. We're all thinking at the same time, this is great. This dude, he knows what's up. He's going to be in there kicking it off, guaranteed. This dude's a straight soldier. So we're walking that, you know, D3 is right on the corner. You walk in a lap, and as you turn that corner, you can see D3 right there. Of course, there's like a little cops. They sit under like a little pet nonny thing. They'll say, hey, keep it moving. You can't stop and really talk to someone on the patio. But as you're walking, you kind of, hey, do some, you know, I see you, I see you. We're turning that corner. There's about three or four of us from Bakersfield looking at homeboy, like, what's up? What's up? And this means a lot. You can get a lot out of them. Just a little bit of staring at someone's eyes, giving them a little flick like this, says a whole lot. Or if you look at the ground, like, that says a whole lot too. And that's pretty much what we got. Around that corner, looking at him, like, hey, boy, what's up? What's up? He didn't give us the, the look like, yeah, I'm going to handle this. He gave us more of the, like, hey, what's up, brother? You know, passive. And we walked away thinking, oh, dude, anticlimactic. Homeboy's not going to kick nothing off. We could just tell. And he's just being real passive and like, he's like, like, damn it, sure enough, a kite came from him, not to me, but just, I heard about it. I don't even know who it was addressed to, actually, probably whoever had the keys to all of DR right there. Pretty much the kite came and said, hey, everything's cool in here. I got in here, I talked to the northerners, a lot of these dudes that are new here, they weren't even, even the guys who kicked it off last time, six months ago. The place had turned over. That's really not the point, though. It's like, maybe new people, who cares? Like, I know if I would have got sent in there... I'm getting ahead of myself. So he shot this kite. Saying it's all good. Everything's cool in here. I don't feel like it, I don't feel any tension. I feel like we should have saw a program. Everything's good. And everyone's like, oh, okay. Okay, right on. Homeboy says, cool, it's cool. But I feel like if I would have went in there, I mean, I wouldn't have been excited about it. I mean, the Northerners are, dude, they're very dedicated to their cause and they're dangerous. So would I, would I have been excited about going there and kicking off? But no, because I know the get down, I know what everyone expects. I would not have been like, no, no. In fact, I feel like I would have gotten in trouble. And this dude didn't. Everyone's like, oh, it's cool. Someone would have said, hey, Splinter, put on kicking it off in there. And I was like, nah. Nah, 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 nah. Nah, 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 nah. 
Hey! Nah. I don't think the nah would have flew. They'd be like, what? Nah? What do you mean? Don't you know what happened six months ago? Blah, blah. Homeboy's like, nah. Oh, okay, you know, homeboy said it's good. They rolled it, it was good. Program there and nothing happened. Didn't kick it off. Tripped me out. I mean, the moral of the story is how some people can get away with stuff and some people can't. It's a trip. And this guy, first impressions of everything, because he wasn't even my, my favorite cup of tea by a long shot. I met, first time I met him, I'm driving through the neighborhood through a four way stop. But there's there four, a four-way stop, like one in the morning, I'm driving my car, and he comes running up to it, forcing me to stop. My window was down the passenger side. Ugh. And I did research, because I wanted to give you the right word, what this dude reminded me of. And it was a sky dancer, or a tube man. You know what that is? One of those things in front of a, a place where they sell cars, and you hook air up to it, and it's a big man. He's like... That's what he looked like. A sky dancer, a tube man in my car. Wearing one shoe, one sandal, no shirt, but not wearing a shirt like leaving the house like, I'm not going to wear a shirt today, but wearing a sh like, I had a shirt, now it's gone. So straight sky dancer, he didn't look his best, and hey, we all go downhill, dope will really mess you up, dope will tear you up, that's why it's not good, I'm getting all these messages right now, damn it, dope will tear you up, dope is not good, it'll make you cut half your body mass in half, and tear your complexion up, and have you going all crazy, and have you do a sky dancer, I get it, come on! I keep getting these messages right now. Hello? Okay. So, be that as it may. Straight sky dancer on his. I was not impressed. The next time I go into county jail, I'm walking in, he's coming out. He looks twice as big as when he was doing the sky dance on the street in the four way stop. He looked healthy. He had had a haircut and you know, I mean, he looked really good. And as he was leaving with the stuff, everyone's like, hey, see that homeboy? See that homeboy? Patting him on the back and giving him like cuffs and it's like, hey, dog, hey, dog. Like, really sad to see him go. Pardon me. Little Amanda, it's becoming a regular thing. Here's your baby. They're sad to see him go. Hey, homeboy, hey, homeboy. And I was like, who's that? They're like, oh, that's the, that's the dog. That's the homeboy. He's a straight, straight homeboy right there. He's a straight gangster. And I didn't tell him, but I didn't front him off and tell them about the Sky Dancer. What the fuck is my, hang on. Hold up. Yeah, so I don't think I could say na, 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 na. You know, I'm doing anything drinks like a coffee mouth, but I'm doing it off camera because some of you guys hate that shit. I didn't ever say I wouldn't drink, I just said I wouldn't drink in front of you guys. So, so trip on this. Same type of story about a homeboy doing something, not getting in trouble for it like everybody else would. We've got these two homeboys, Zombie and another dude named Steve. Both of them are heavy hitters. I feel like Zombie was a low rider because I've seen some pictures of him and some of the low riders. He had the swastika on his neck and he could, you know, he could sing real good at it, all tatted down. I never heard about him doing anything crazy in prison, but he ran around with some crazy people. I don't know. I guess he was a straight. I, I guess he was a gangster. I ran around with him a little bit. But he couldn't fuck with Steve. Steve had those hands. Steve's just like a stout, looked like a pit bull. Steve's from my neighborhood, my part down, Rex and Acres. And he's just a one hitter quitter. I seen a punch of dude in the, in the jaw and straight break it. Dude was like all sweating. I'm like, man, I can't do this right here. He was wanting to do some dope at this house. Steve was telling him no. Dude's like, come on, let me just do something real quick. Steve's like, no. Dude asked again. And Steve, boom. Broke his jaw. Dude's like, oh, okay. I'll leave then. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah. that's what I would encourage you to do. So they were funking. Because Steve usually had a sack. He fronted some to zombie. He drove out to Old Dog to collect. And the zombie had a girl with him. You know, sometimes you have a girl with you. And he, was, he had a little attitude. And Steve wasn't feeling it. Pardon me. And then zombie and that chicken, someone else, literally tried to jump Steve. So, pardon me. Ended it badly. Steve ended up taking off. And later, Steve's in county jail. In fact, he's my workout partner. I've seen him every day. And he was telling me, if a zombie comes in, he goes, I'm going to grab him. I'm going to clean the floor with him. And then I'm going to fucking clean the walls. I was like, damn. Then, what do you think happens a couple days later? Steve's in Barracks 21. Zombie drives into Barracks 16. He drives up. Well, you know what you do? First thing you do when you get into a, a dorm, right when you walk in, your homeboy, you go, hey, what's up, homeboy? Hey, Splinter from X and A. Hey, what up? My homeboy's here. After you introduce yourself, who's here? Who's on the yard? So he walked in. Hey, what's up? Zombie all down. Chill. Well, homeboys are here. Oh, whoop, whoop, whoop. And then we got Steve over 21. He's like, what? Steve, whoop. Says last night. Yeah, him. Oh. Zombie went started making clavos. Grabbed some tobacco. Got a clavo maker, which is a broom and a little shampoo thing. Started banging them in. Got a glove. Made up a couple clavos. Went to the bathroom. Ran with them. Walked right out the gate. Right down to the duty office. Not duty office. Duty office is up here. But whatever the little shack is right there. Walk straight up to it. Deuces. I mean, no, no, hi, bye, kiss my ass, nothing. Just walked in, found out Steve was there, made his claw bows, ran with them, and left. 
leave it up to your imagination where I went or what I'm doing. Everyone's like, hey, what's going on? What are you? The next day, he's like, well, Zombie was here. I mean, he came in. He heard Steve was here, and he made the claw and he fucking left. Everyone knew what happened. He rolled it up because of Steve. But but did anyone say, well, get him. Next time, he's get that piece of shit. You know, he's, he's got a green light on him. He's trash. He, he rolled it up. No, no. Straight love for him. Everyone sees, hey, what's up, bro? Hey. He never got brought up again. This is weird. Some people could do stuff. I mean, it had to have been me. Well, I haven't splintered. I don't know. He came, heard Steve was here. He got some claws around with it. It was like, get that fool. Green light on him. He rolled it up because the dude get him. Then no, some people can just do shit. I don't know. And Zombie was not my favorite dude either because when I met him, first time I ever met him after I got in my first term, told you guys when I was 16, my cousin put a tattoo on my back. It was a, It's a guy holding a knife. He looks like this. The hat like this and like a big old, my name's Chris with a K, a big old necklace with a big old K emblem and like Jerry Curl. It looked like a black guy. And just where you're standing, holding a knife, and like they gave me a lot, it looked like black guys. People gave me a lot of shit about it in county jail, and I was real paranoid about going to prison with it. I was just like, oh my gosh. In fact, I, was, I had a month of the house, some shit went down, I almost got busted for assault on staff. I didn't care that I was going to get two more years out of my time, all this time. No, I cared about I was going to have to go to the hole, D6 at Wasco, and they're going to, without it, and they're going to see me without my shirt, and they're going to see that tattoo. Oh, that's what I was worried about. One time we were playing basketball. Me and a couple of the guys, they do shirts and skins. You know what I'm saying? One one group of three keeps their shirt on. One group of three takes it off. The team I was on was supposed to be skins. Take your shirt off. I thought, I'm not taking my fucking shirt off. Like, okay, calm down, Splinter. You can be on the team that has shirts. Dude, I did not want no one to see that tattoo on my back. Or the guy like... Zombie was supposed to cover it up for me. Hooked up with him my first term. We're driving around. He's like, yeah, brother, I'll cover that for you. Which he ended up covering it up. He wanted to go to pick a part, though. Where they have all beat up abandoned cars. Because he needed a part for his BMW or something. And he's walking all over with his wrench in one hand, his flashlight in the other. Just having a magnificent time. And I'm just like... You know what done, homeboy? I'm like, dude, I'm giving you ten minutes tops. I'm getting the fuck out of here, bro. I'm like, I'm not even dressed for this. Dude, I got my shell toes on. I'm get the fuck out of here, dog. It's dusty. Like, I ain't bring no gloves. I'm not... No, it's not my get down, dog. I didn't say I was going to come Manny Mo and jack this shit for you. We got to get the fuck out of here. So, yeah, anybody ended up getting out of there. He didn't get his part. He was mad. Still did the tattoo shit, but the fuck out of here. So yeah, trip on this though. I catch the chain, county jail, current county jail to Wasco. It's me, Ironwood, Silver, and Silent. The homeboys I can remember. We get in Wasco reception, we go through, we go to C yard. I go to C1, Silent goes to C2, Silver goes to C2, Ironwood goes to C4. Right away, I go and see one giant has the keys. The homeboy giant, I'm programming him, programming over there in C2. Somehow Silent gets the keys right away, and I don't know Iron Wizard over there. He's a C4 programming. So Silent has the keys, but Silver is hungry, been starving Marvin in county jail for a couple months. Finds his case, gets to Wasco, hungrier than a two-headed shark. It's dinner time. They're, they're serving hamburgers. He figures out a way to to, to to circle around and get another tray. Get another tray. So, we can't do that because there's only a certain amount, and the porters, the inmates, the convicts that serve, they get the extra. And so you're really ripping off on the homeboys. You can't grab an extra tray. You just, you, you know, it's like, you just can't do it. So, he got caught doing it by the cops, though, before really the inmates could get to him. And the cops caught him, still on the hamburger, and sent him over to where we were at, C1. So, Silent sends a kite over to us, saying, hey, Silver over there? Like, yeah, yeah, he came over here. Do you know why he's there? Yeah, he came over here and told us he stole an extra burger. Yeah, he stole an extra burger. We didn't get a chance to get to him. Cops got him before we did. Beat that ass. Silent send these kites. Get that mother. Beat his ass. We're like, no. I'm not going to do the cops work for him. Why should we punish him? He got hungry. He got that long gut. And he went for a burger. He got caught. He got shot down. Moved over here. Why beat his ass for it? For what? He learned his lesson. He's not going to do it again. No one came up short. You guys didn't ride over the burger over there. No one's mad. The only one's mad is the cops. They send him out here and it's like, kick back, chill. You're not, you know, you're running fucking C2. You don't send us kites over here to C1 telling us who to jump. You're not going to run this program over here, homeboy. Just kick back. And we're not going to move on him. Fuck it. Later on, though, down the road, about a year or so, Silver's an H5 program and kick him back. All of a sudden, Silent comes in there. Supposed to be this big badass dude. Gets the keys everywhere. He's just this big, this tough motherfucker. He comes in there and Silver sees him. He's way in the back. And he goes, Yeah! Yes, I see you. Come back here. Come back here. Imagine walking to a dorm with 200 people and you're talking to the cop and he's telling you where your bunk's at. And there's 10 other people around you and you're getting your cup with your spoon and your toilet paper. And in your peripheral, you see some dude that you were trying to get jumped about six months ago. And he's going, come on, motherfucker, come on. You know, he's trying to get busy. It's like, all right, there's one of my enemies. There's not. Let's get this. 
But no, you know what Sonny did? He just stayed right there. Told the cop, I can't be in here. Well, what are you going to fight the dude? He ain't that damn tough. He doesn't have a weapon. You guys are going to get caught. You're going to throw some punch. The cop's going to say, rear, 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 get down. What the hell? Straight. Rolled it up. Out of there. Unbelievable when that went around. Hey, did you guys know that fucking Sonny ran it up? Because, rolled it up because Silver tried to get with his program on H5. Try to fight him over that shit. Crazy. You know what's crazy about Silent, though? Remember when he's supposed to be able to sing, I guess. Some singer. We've got a homeboy that raps real good, and I guess he he raps and silent sang on a couple of his rap songs. You know how to do the rap singing thing. So I guess he could sing. I, I don't know. One time I'm in county jail on the farm. Just got busted. I'm in there kicking heroin. I don't know where my car is out there. I don't know about the. I, I'm, I don't know how big my violation is going to be. I don't know if they found the fucking dope or if they didn't and the knife and I'm just tripping out and I can't hear from my lady and I've been bust a couple of days kicking them and I see him in the yard. He goes, hey, Splinter. I go, hey, what's up, dude? He goes, hey, he goes, hey, I'm, I'm up there in Barrett 6, some boy. He goes, hey, bring a candy bar and a shot of coffee and I'll sing for you. And I just went, this game will look like I'm speechless. I don't know how to, I don't know how to tell you. Like, if I say what I want, it's going to come out like an insult. So here, let me insult you with my face. That way it might be, not be so insulting. But here, get some of that. Because, dude, no, I'm not going to get some... What? Did you really think I was going to come later and be like, Hey, I'm here. I got the candy bar and the coffee. Here. Do you, do you like Butterfinger? <laughs> what song are you going to sing for me today? Na, 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 na. Hey, 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 Yeah. No, you ain't my chain, homeboy. I don't think so. Because I made it so fucking hot in this room. I'm taking one for the team. If you guys knew how hot it was in this room. It's like a sauna, dude. I'm... And, uh... And I bought the light bulbs that do not put off heat. So... That's deceiving. I don't have the fan going because I just don't want to create any kind of shadow or ripple reflect for you guys. But anyway, be that as it may, spin trip on this though. Then take the case of Danny and Reckless. I get to H5. I had just got jumped in H3. Got my nose broke. I lost to a one on one fight and then I got jumped and it was a bunch of bullshit. And then the went from H3 to H5 and I walk in, tell the Bakersfield boys what happened. They're still going to, they want to investigate it right the streets. I got a broken nose. I'm washing the blood out of my shirt. All eyes on me, two black eyes, like, fuck, man. But then this, sh this shit goes down. And I was glad it went down because it kind of took a little bit of the fucking heat off me. It gave the mother something else to look at and trip on, somebody else to trip on. And what happened was, it's full of Danny and the kids to H5. What they do is they, I told you guys this before, in Wall School Reception, you know, they have C yard, H yard, and D yard. But then they like to take people to A yard. It's supposed to be main line, but they turned it into reception. So let's do that. Let's get y'all in over to A yard reception. So, we're on H5, they do an a year reception run, come grab a bunch of people, take Danny, move him over there. See you guys later, later homeboys. He gives the keys to this other dude, because he had them, he's leaving, gotta give him somebody, okay, later, takes a shit, he's outy. He goes over, they put him in A3, he walks in, sees Rexless, homeboy Rexless. Rexless is like, Rexless pretty much did the same thing to him that Silver did to Silent in H5 back in the day, pretty much, come get some of this, it's on, I'm gonna break the hell? Well, my thing froze. I'm gonna break you. What's the sign language for off? Off. Uh -huh. Wait, off. That's stupid. I'm gonna break you off, motherfucker. Hey, he's like, come get some of this. It's on the Kraken. I'm gonna stomp you out. And Danny had stuff. Seen that? Seen Reckless saying, come get some. And like, flipped to you, told the cops, I can't be in here. Hell no. They took him right back to H5. We're talking about some high power killer gangster dude. They had the keys of the building he just left. He's supposed to be all that. Big bucket. All that in a big bucket of boats. And I mean, you know, fuck. And his knife has a knife. And it's like, what in the hell? He, so he goes right back in H5 of this stuff. And they go, what happened? What happened? He goes, I'll tell you what happened. We went over there and saw a reckless. And I said, fuck that. I'm not going to get down with him. I'd rather come over here and fight three of you guys and fight one of him. So you guys go ahead and handle it. I got an issue coming for rolling it up. Give you what I got coming. What's it going to be? A three on one, a four on one? You guys want to hit me with a suck and luck? Handle it. And the dude who had the keys that he just gave the keys to, Jack Morris County, decided, hey, you know what? We're not going to let you fight anybody. It's your tough fighter. We don't want that you get a run back. Because you feel a lot of shame for rolling it up, and we, we send a couple dudes on you, and you knock both the dudes out, and now you feel good again. No, we want you to stay humbled. We want you to stay feeling like shit. We want the last memory in your head to be that walk of shame you took. That you just fucking tucked tail and ran, dude. Why? And I don't understand this, dude. You can fight anyone in jail because the cops going to see him break it the fuck up. I can understand if you're, in, if you're in a cell. Now that could be a little sketchy. You walk in a cell, it's all locked up, lights go off, and your cell, you set the knife down, and he's holding one. He says, hey, we're both going to start whacking each other here in about 30 seconds. Like, yikes, now that can get rough. Okay, there's like a scale, right? It does get from rough. It, go, it does get from 1 to 10, okay? But it's only like on a level 2 when you're fighting someone in the A yard building. Cops everywhere. I mean, just da -da -da, burr, 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 prone out, might get sprayed. Yeah, but he would not chance it. Came over there and said, fuck all that. 
Then he went on the streets, killed someone, got caught with a fucking body in his trunk, trying to overcompensate. I don't know, man. I can't call it! Just real quick, though, I, 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 as far as F-Pod, where the North Dana County Jail, they won't put anybody there with a swastika or like a white power or any type of any type of racist tattoo, anything political, because as soon as they go in there, the North Daniels will jump them, be all over them. The white boy goes in there, political ink. In fact, when white boys go in there, a lot of times the North Daniels will say, take your shit off. Once they got ink you got, it's political, they just jump them. So the cops know that. So one time I'm in H-Pod, and the cops come in, and they say, hey, everyone take off your shirts. We need about four or five dudes to go over to F-Pod. We need to take some white boys over there, but we have to take people with no political ink. No one wants to go to F-Pod. No one wants to go program the Northerners. Those aren't allies. I mean, they're just... So don't fight with them. We fight with them. We don't do business with them. It's just, who wants to go over there? Nobody. So this one homeboy, Mason from Taft, he has a New England Patriot tattoo right here. And he goes, will this, will this work? He goes, I have this. And the cops saw that bird ain't going to fly. He's like, oh, man, I, what the fuck? What if there's 49er fans over there? He ended up not, he ended up not having to go. Kind of crazy. Fuck, I have to have one other story. I tip my tongue. I was going to say, damn it. Oh, oh, I was at Corcoran. To my right, to my left, was Northerners in both cells. They were on lockdown because the Northerners and the Southsiders kept riding back and forth. They let two or three out, and they, you know, as a little trial run, they jump each other on site, north and south, getting busy. Then the woods went to lockdown because they heard someone was going to be conspiracy to get murdered or something, so they locked us down for a week. We were asked out, and we didn't have shit. And the Northerners, who had been locked down more than us, shot us a kite. I'm like, hey, Woods, we know you guys are locked down. You like, you need anything? We're like, actually, we need some coffee. They shot us a brand new back coffee, not even open. And then the ones on the other side shot us a couple of soup. So it's like the Northern Nathaniels are taking care of me and or Smiley from Orange County and other wood. And fucking, they've been having lockdown longer than us. And they're having this shit. And they hooked us up. And later, we're still in lockdown. We're coming off. And they're sending people around. They send this Fresno dude, our cell. looked in. He's like, hey, what's up, fellas? You guys all right? Somebody's like, yeah, our neighbor shot us some coffee. So we're good. And I was all thinking to myself, fuck. He knows our neighbor's North Daniels. He pretty much just told this wood that the North Daniels shot us coffee. But she didn't say that. I don't give a fuck you would anyway. Fuck him. So anyway. Be that as it may. Yeah. One more thing about Corcoran. Had a homeboy there. From Colonial Bankers, the south side. Like I said, on lockdown constantly because all stuff from North Daniels. I went by there one time to check on him. You okay? You're from Kern County, from Bakersfield. You're my homeboy. You're on lockdown. What do you need? What can I help you with? Little did I know, he had more drugs and more action, more drugs than I did. As it turned out, he started taking care of me. He was the one sending stuff down to me. Once a week, he'd send me a nice little clawbow with some speed. I'm like, damn, dude, you haven't been out of your cell in six months. You're on lockdown. Yeah, yeah. Man, your arms are reaching further than Ma Bell. You ever heard that one before? Anyway, yeah, that's what's up. So here is that Friday video. It's Saturday. Yes, it is. My bad. I'm going to cut the string and let it fly. Peace.